Good evening. Uh, we are back to Ask John Show live, and today we have some exciting topics to go through, and we have some exciting guests as well too. So before I want to start on this one, uh, if any one of you wanted to build a career in HR, you want to build a career in recruitment, or let's say even training, or even on HRBP as well too. Congratulations, because you found the right show to watch. <laughs> So let's start with this one, so HRBP. Uh, would you like to share a little bit about this role? What is HR business partner? So the viewers can really understand what is HRBP actually does in HR department. Mm -hmm. uh, so the HRBP is stand for HR, Human Resources Business Partner. Uh, so I think that the, the human resources department have undergone a significant transformation. So nowadays the HR department is no longer an administrative and uh, operational function. It had involved into more strategic and business focused department. And, and, and the, the human the resources business partner is, uh, is, the, is the HR uh, professional who actively integrate the business strategy with the people management practice. Uh, so uh, every company, every organization uh, have their own business strategy, have their own business goal and priority. And at the same time, the HR de uh, department, they also have their own people agenda, they have their own process, procedure and policy. So how we can align and integrate two things uh, to make sure that like all the HR activity and and, and program is to uh, to support and to drive for the business. So this is the role of the HRPP. Uh, so put it into a more simple way. You can imagine that like for example, as an uh, HR generalist, you only. Um, follow the business conversation you follow the business direction you follow the business request but as an hrpp you are the one who contribute to the business conversation you are the one who joining in the planning of the business strategy and 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 and, and, and provide the people inside to support the business to achieve the uh, the business goal and 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 and, uh, and even a senior hr BP can lead the conversation, lead the business conversation, and lead the, the, the business uh, strategy. And, and, and the role of an HRPP is to uh, uh, proactively integrate with internal stakeholders to make sure that they have the people agenda that we align to and it to support the overall business strategy. So I think like it will be acting as a consultant to the business whenever it comes to people related issues and matter. Great, great. I think yeah. I think you've been really passionate when been sharing about this HRBP role, and I, I absolutely understand yeah. that there's a lot of passion into it. So now let's come to this one. I want to be an HRBP. Somebody say that I want to be an HRBP. What are the top seven skills somebody need to build to become an HRBP? Um, I think like traditionally, if you ask like what is the critical skill and competency to be success in HR and to be success in HRPP. Many people will mention about soft skill, interpersonal skill, or even HR knowledge and expertise. But I think for me, and, and, and it's true uh, now that in many, many organizations, uh, the first priority and the first competency that uh, an HR must have is the business acumen which is a good understanding about the business. Uh, this includes the understanding about the business that you are in, the competitive environment that your company is operates, uh, what is your market value, what is your propor uh, proportioning, what is your, 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 your market uh, uh, value, market share, and especially what is the interest from different stakeholders, both internally and externally. And, 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 and uh, only when you understand uh, about the business, you can only, uh, you can like consult to the business about the people related matter. And, 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 and especially uh, to gain the credibility and, 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 and the trust from the business, you have to be able to speak in business language Imagine that if you don't understand about the business, you don't understand about the challenge that they, they are uh, they are currently facing. How you can like, consult them? How you can give advice to them in terms of the people issue and matter? 
So I think the first thing is uh, business acumen. Um, the second thing in line with uh, what I just mentioned is uh, how to link the business strategy, how to link the business challenge and opportunity with HR activity. Uh, so for example, if your company wants to uh, enter into a new market, or you want to um, to have a new market segment. So as an HR, you have be you have to be able to uh, forecast, foresee, and analyze uh, uh, different situation and highlight different people challenges in terms of resources, in terms of skill and competency need, in order to support the business to run and, and to uh, to to um, to um, to achieve the, 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 the goal and the, the objective they have like uh, defined. So the first one is business acumen. Second one is uh, being able to link the business challenge and opportunity with HR activity. Uh, and then it's when, uh, it will to other soft skills like uh, uh, communication and negotiation. Uh, I think that's like communication is, is, is important everywhere, right? Yeah. So uh, if you cannot like communicate with upper level manager, uh, you cannot communicate with your employee, with your stakeholder, how you can like, influence them, how you can advise them, and how you can consult them. So um, so uh, communication is important. And easy communication with influence, not just like normal communication. And uh, and then it can it will be um, negotiation and problem solving, because like as an HR, sometimes you are um, you have to uh, stand for both employer and employee benefits. So how you can negotiate, how you can um, uh, uh, talk and work with both sides in order to reach an uh, an, 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 an mutual agreement and and how to uh, to come to the decision that benefit both sides and how to harmonize the benefit from both sides. So negotiation and problem solving are also important. Uh, and I think uh, one more skill that is also important is the um, adaptability uh, skill. Uh, you must be, uh, you, you have to be flexible uh, because like uh, nowadays we operate in the VUCA world. So VUCA is stand for like volatility, uh, uncertainty, um, uh, complexity and ambiguity. So we uh, uncertainty and, and, and unexpected thing can come and, 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 uh, and, and, and mix up your agenda. So you have to be flexible to deal with like different type of people in different environment, in different context. So, uh, so being flexible and um, uh, uh, adapt to different environment is also important for HR. All right. All and right. Go on. Yes. And, and one, one more thing, like last but not least, is the human resources by uh, knowledge and expertise. I don't say like it's uh, less important, but I think it is easier to learn uh, than the business acumen and the other interpersonal skill. Because for HR knowledge, you can learn like from a lot of sources. Like, for example, I'm, I'm studying in international economic and business, but now I'm working in HR, and I think like uh, it didn't take me a lot of time to learn about the, uh, the human uh, resources management practice and framework, and also learn about some legal uh, framework to, to understand about the, uh, the labor law. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sharing. So viewers, you want to be yeah. be an HR BP, you want to build an HR BP career or, or you've been already in HR uh, generalist or you want to find a career in that one. So these are the tips from Chum. Number one, understand business equipment. That means understand the business. Number two, link business strategy to HR activity. Number three, communication. Number four, just to add, communication with influence. It's just not only just speaking, communication with influence. Then the next one is about yeah. negotiation. And the next one is problem solving. And then and the sixth one is about flexible and being adaptive. And the last one she mentioned about, of course, you need to learn about HR knowledge. There's, there's no getaway of that yeah. one, you have to learn. But she also mentioned probably this is the most easiest way among all of them. Thank you, Chum for sharing those, those bullets. I'm sure that that has been valuable for the viewers. So now let's go into it. So being an HR BP, how did you build those skill? Uh, let's let's pick pick few of them. Let's say about uh, communication with influence. How did you build this skill inside of you? Mm, 
I think the, it's a very interesting question. But I think like uh, we don't have one formula that can be applied for everyone. No like one size fits all, right? Uh, but I think for me, like always keep a uh, curiosity mindset. Like you always curiosity, curious to learn new thing and to completely open to uh, to learn new thing, to open to the feedback from other, open to listen to uh, to different point of view. So this mindset is very important to help you to grow and to uh, grow every day and to be a better uh, version of yourself. So uh, I have some tips to um, to adopt the the, the, the curiosity mindset. Uh, so I think the first one is to always adopt the beginner mindset. So for example, when you are joining a conversation, you already know about the topic, or even you are an expert in that field, but always keep a beginner mindset to uh, to listen to other opinion, to listen to different point of view, and and uh, before you are uh, sharing anything. So um, with that mindset, you you can learn a, a lot, and you always find new way of working, new way of uh, doing things better and more efficiency. And and then you can um, um, listen, observe, and also uh, ongoing ask question. So uh, so. Um, I think like a lot of uh, advice for for for, for uh, you can hear like don't don't be shy to ask like uh, stupid question because like every question you, uh, the question you ask can, can can help you so don't shy to be ask ask a lot of question so uh, for example uh, whenever I come I, I see someone with a strong communication uh, skill I I I mean like. Uh, reach out to them and ask like how you can how you uh, build this skill how you uh, you, you adopt this skill and how you practice it and i can learn from from, from them and uh always keep an open mindset and curiosity mindset to learn from others uh so and and and, and next will be to practice so if you are not good at communication if you are not good at networking and then you know if the area that you need to develop just like practice it like practice practice and practice practice make perfect so i believe that if you invest enough of your time and effort you can be excellent at like every skill yeah uh and and um and uh, one thing uh, one, one interesting that i very like is the fix it until you make it so I'm not forgetting that you are uh, you are lie about what you can and cannot do, but faking it here mean um, and it refer to the self confident. Whenever you um, you you ask yourself, am I good enough for this? Am I am I good enough for the position? Am I good enough for uh, for this role? Or um, do I have the capability to complete it and achieve it? Just replace it with I can do it. I believe that I'm the best one to deliver this. Uh, they have the reason to choose me. They have the reason to put me in that position so I can do it. So just like believe in yourself and the self-confidence and the positive thinking can help you a lot. Yeah. Anything else you want to add about building communication with influence? Um, communication with influence. So. Um, uh, I think like because like an Asian Asia PP, we have to um, uh, work with uh, work a lot with like internal stakeholders. So in order to uh, sometimes they are very high level, mm -hmm. they are, can be the management team and senior manager. So to to really like communicate with influence is quite like uh, challenging because like they are maybe older than you, experienced than you. So I think like. Uh, Understand your, your 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 the one who are communicating with you first. Understand about your their need, their demand, and their interest before like, entering any conversation. So you can uh, uh, find the common thing to talk, common thing to share, and then you you can like influence them in the way that you want to, and and drive the conversation in the way that you want to. Thank you for sharing. So viewers, you want to build that communication with influence so these are the tips number one being have a curious mindset open to listen other adopt a beginner mindset never act like you were even you were an expert and then uh, listen to others practice makes a man and woman perfect that's the call line and the last one is a fake it until you make it it's not about lying it but self-confidence 
thank you for sharing on this one. So there's a lot of exciting thing. I would love to ask all of them one by one, but I think it's going to cost a lot of time. So I just wanted to pick up um, negotiation. How did you build your negotiation skill? Uh, negotiation, so um, I think like I mentioned previously, uh, whenever you enter any conversation and, and you have to negotiate with someone, you have to understand the, the need, the demand and the interest of the people that you are having the conversation with. And, 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 and uh, uh, you cannot like uh, bring any like football and, and any like idea that only benefit you. So it will be like, a win-win solution. So whenever I come to everyone that I want to ne negotiate with them, I always try to bring a win-win solution and show them that I have the benefit from this and you also get the benefit from this. So it will be a win-win and a mutual benefit. So and 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 and, and by uh, reaching this, uh, we are both like. Uh, uh, having a very better team so uh, so um, so it's easier for them to to listen to your idea to your proposal and, and be influenced by your idea yeah. all right so viewers you want to build a negotiation skill i think this is the core thing she, she just mentioned about focused about creating win-win relationship win-win nobody lose nobody have to lose and then it's much easier uh thank you for sharing um let's Probably the, as we're talking about an HR pro, so that's why let's talk about, even you mentioned as, as the last skill. So as a knowledge of HR, so what are the, the top three knowledge you think about somebody should learn after joining an HR career? Knowledge, HR knowledge? Yeah. Uh, um, so I think there's, um, it's it quite hard to pick like uh, two or three most important things. Uh, but I think that's like uh, the the first thing of every HR policy and strategy is compliant. So first thing is you have to have some legal knowledge. So I I know that many HR they are not graduates from law school or they didn't study HR. So before you enter the HR field, they, you you have to gain some some legal knowledge, at least the basic one, the the, the knowledge about the labor law, the knowledge about the um, uh, the, the, the the legal environment that the company and the organization that you are served, uh, uh, for in operate to understand and before to uh, before implement any HR process and procedure. And uh, this is the first one. Uh, the second one, is, I think, like is um, it's it's quite wide, but like it's the uh, human resources management process and practice, and it it, it have many smaller part under the 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 HR people management practice, but uh, it's very important. It can be include like um, uh, people development, uh, talent management, succession planning. Um, uh, managing um, uh, uh, managing the critical and high potential uh, people in the organization a lot a lot of uh, process under the, the people management um, and, uh, and 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 uh, last but not least is uh, is about like uh, I think it's not a knowledge but more like um, m more like uh, like how to say it more like um, because uh, the, as an HR, you are uh, your your role is to helping other to grow and to develop. So how you can like helping other to grow and develop, and you are not an expert in in, in every field. So how you can help others? So maybe the coaching, uh, mentoring, and developing people skill and, and mindset is also important. It's not really knowledge because no book and no course teach you how to develop people, how to coaching people. But this is a thing that you have to gain over over time when you are in the the, the, the role. Yeah. All right, viewers. You want to build an HR career? So these are the tips from Cham. Number one, learn about HR policy and the labor law. Number three is about HR, HR process in the company. You need to learn about it too. Number four is of talent management, mm -hmm. how you, you take care of the right yeah. talent in the company. And number four is of coaching skills. Um, so viewers, you want to build an HR. So look, there's a lot going on in this one. So if you have any questions, go ahead and comment your questions in the 
in the, in the live thread and we'll we will answering those questions maybe in the next 20 to 25 minutes we have a few more questions we're going to go through to give you the value so feel free to go ahead and keep commenting in the live session and we will love to see you getting engaged and your question as well too so with that i'm moving to the next question on this one jump so mm -hmm. now there's a COVID going on a uh, lot of people um considering about doing a career switch from one industry to another industry or some people even in considering to change the career job but you had a pretty in interesting career um you graduate from international business and then you was working in a marketing and then you moved to hr so and then you actually not even in the same industry you was in cigarette company and then you moved to um uh, now you're in another type of industry, so you we met a lot of switch, and I so I think sharing about this one will be really valuable for other people who are also in that some situation to make the switch. So with that, um, my discussion will be in this one. So how did you when you move from one industry to another industry? What are the key things you have to adapt very fast? Mm, I think just like um. Uh, because like uh, for the HR practice and uh, HR, um, the, 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 the people management, it can be the same everywhere. But the business contact, the environment and the organization you are working and operating is totally different. So how you can adjust and adapt to uh, and, and bring the, the, the knowledge and the skill you have to from, from this industry to to, to, to different industry. For example, when I'm working in uh, in, in fast-moving consumer good industry, you have to understand uh, uh, the, the type of people that are working in that industry, what is the, the typical profile or, or what is the uh, critical competency and skill for people working in that industry. And then when I'm moving into another industry, maybe in the bank sector or now I'm working in Snyder in the uh, energy management and automation, I have to understand about the business work in order to understand the people who are working in that field in order to like adjust like and, 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 and uh, um, adjust about the people management practice to that industry. So back to my the, the point I, I mentioned previously, it is it all about the understanding about the business uh, that you are uh, operating in, understand about the um, the the, uh, the the competitive environment understand about the business strategy the business objective and the business priority of the organization that you are serving understand about the interest of different stakeholders that you're serving uh, internally it will be the employer and uh, the, 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 the employee and also the, the company that you are working for externally it can be the customer the the, the, the stakeholder of the company so you have to understand different interests and and and, and, and um, of, of different stakeholders of the industry that you are serving all right all right uh, so these are the tips viewers she mentioned about when you're making a industry switch number one understand the business content product mm -hmm. number two yeah. is understand the people in the industry because uh, it's a product mm -hmm. and the business content define what kind of people inside that one too you have been chosen so hopefully you are also probably can adopt that one too so don't be scared about it so number three is about the stakeholder of the role the, so the role you were taking in the industry, well, who are the key stakeholders around the role would be a, a key impact factor as well too. So with that, so I want to move to the next one. So now we talk about the career switch. So when you was moving from marketing to HR, by a career switch, what, what was the thing was running in your mind that time? And why did you decide to make the switch? Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, because like, uh, Actually, I have a quite smooth uh, transition and script because like I'm working in marketing and the first assignment when I uh, script to HR in talent acquisition and employer branding. Mm. So because like employer branding is quite similar to marketing. So instead of you are doing marketing and branding for the physical product or service, now you are doing the marketing and branding for the company and you're selling the opportunity to work in the company. So move a uh, linking from, from uh, 
uh, marketing to employer branding is quite close and, and I can leverage all the skill, the knowledge, the technique for marketing to the new role. And then when I, 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 I start my career in, in, in Asia with talent acquisition and employer branding and I successful, uh, successfully with the role, I, 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 uh, I have the chance to move to other the, the field in Asia like the learning and development, uh, the, the talent development, and now the Asia business partner. So actually, for me, it's quite a smooth like, transition and and, uh, and sweet. But like I I, ha- I had some like advice for for someone who who who, uh, who is considering having a, a career change. So I think the the first one is to um, decide if you really really need a career change. So which means like you are considered about the reason to change and the reason to sweep. It is like strong enough and it is reasonable. Because I know a lot of people, they are not happy with their current course. They are not happy with the current colleagues. They are, t- they are not happy with the current company. So they decide that I have to change the career. I have to move to uh, another thing. I have to move to another industry. So you have to consider carefully about the post and the pull factor. So for the post factor, what did you do not lie about your current or career job? Uh, are the factors present in the job and the company that you are applying for? And what about the, the pool factor? What is about the new job that attract you? What does it say about the interest and the preference that you might have? So you can consider carefully and you consider carefully about the region that you want to make a, a, a career change and make a career switch. If the current one didn't support you to achieve your long-term goal and it didn't bring you to the dest- destination that you want to. So you can consider a, a career change and career switch. But it, uh, if it's just about the uh, the unhappy of the current uh, colleague, current boss, or current environment, you have to think very carefully. Switch the job. And, and, and yeah, to switch the, the, the job. Switch the and, job. And then, <laughs> Another company, yeah, that, that will solve the problem probably. Yes, go on, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and then you maybe have to be mentally and emotionally ready, because like sometimes when you are in the role in the in one field and you have gained some success in that, and then you move to another one, you have to be uh, ready to take a lower level position. You you even have to um, um, have to learn from or report to younger colleagues, and and you may receive a lower salary because you change to, to a totally different. Different like like like, uh, um, like 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 sector or different part. So be mentally and emotionally ready uh, for for this, and um, and 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 and, and uh, understand understand yourself first and assess yourself. What is your interest? What is your strength? What is your your, your weakness and with all the uh, understanding from yourself you can like, make a list of what type of career that might fit you uh, that what, what type of, of career that you may have the strength to perform and you can seek for advice for maybe for your current your, your ex-boss your friend and, and some if you have the mentor please like seek your advice before you having any like significant career change and um, and and you can take small action, even if not imper- imperfect one. For example, I have some Im- Im- employee. They are in back office. Uh, they are doing uh, uh, some back office role, and now they want to move to fun office, uh, fun line role. So I think like one of the advice I give to 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 uh, him is to you can uh, if you want to uh, move from back office to a front office uh, with a, a sales role, you can take a sales support role first to really understand about the sales and the, the front office and the front line environment to see whether you really fit and you really want to uh, develop your career in that area before you fully integrate and, and, chan- and transfer to that role. So that's smaller step, even if uh, it's not like, perfect. And, 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 and uh, uh, explore with, uh, without expectation. Because like sometimes you hesitate to invest your time and your effort into something unless you know for certain that it will lead to lead you to do something worthwhile. But the the the, the fact is that 
you you often don't know like whether something is worthwhile until you really really try this. So just like uh, keep an open mindset to to explore without expectation. Um, when when you uh, come to the decision to take a career change. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, John, for sharing. So viewers, these are the key points you. Before making a, a career switch, these are the points for you to consider. Number one, are you really need it? Do you really, really need it? Deep dive inside. Yeah. Number two is about, are you mentally and emotionally ready for this? Number three is about, take a smaller step first, not the big jump. Um, and number four is explore with lower expectation. If you come with a higher expectation, you may have a crash landing. And with this one, I just wanted to add, because I just picked up from, from Cham's story as well too. Before making a career switch, pick an, when you're move, move, making another switch, think and do like Cham, what she did. Think about, you list down your, your present skill set and see that where most of the skill, you can just simply transition to your next role. Like she did this one, she was in branding and marketing and she was working in employer branding. Bam, she, she was a superstar over there. And, and with that, she because uh, she came from a marketing background and she was doing way better than marketing from any other people probably in that unit. And that's helped her to be very comfortable and get used to that role. And then she go for more explore and bigger role. So you, if you do that, you will be winning too. Um, so now let me move to the next thing is about. Um, so. I think you mentioned about networking recently and you've been saying that uh, this thing yeah. is really needed and, and, and being an HR person, knowing a, a networking or, or knowing right people in, in, in that one to, to bring value, to bring their company is all about group of people to work together and HR who, who, who kind of lead that one, onboarding people. So what are your, let's say top five to seven tips for networking? Mm. For talent. So I not as just yeah. adding more more friends. It's not that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually, I'm not really good at networking, but my job required me to be good at this. <laughs> so uh, I have to, yeah. Right. Actually, I um, uh, I think that's like um, for me, like I I, I will like uh, focus on more on quality over quantity. So uh, for me, I will uh, focus focusing on one or few uh, meaningful conversation rather than having a lot of like uh, a lot of survey level uh, connection and this can lead you to nowhere so i just uh, I, I will focus more on few connection but the quality and it good yeah, for you to invest your time to un really understand the person that you want to network and, and build a connection and 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 and, and, and um, having meaningful conversation with that people and from those people they can help you link you to to another people that maybe have the uh, the same interest or have the same mindset or can support you in in in, in um, in your career or in your in life, so for me, it will be like focus on quality over quantity. Um, uh, second one will be I think like uh, nowadays like the social media will be the new business hub. So I think like uh, I, uh, I I'm, I'm 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 not advising you to like having a perfect like Facebook or Instagram or, or, or LinkedIn profile and you have to fake it. No, you just be yourself. But like be uh, be, be be mindful about uh, the, the the your presence and your image in social media because like uh, um, uh, it, it also important because like um, nowadays we we connect a lot to social media. You have a lot of like coverage. In, in, in Facebook or uh, in, uh, in LinkedIn or even in Instagram so and, and you also can attract a lot of people like you in, in that kind of platform so may, you may be aware of like, how you appear and how you want to appear in, in social media but don't like, just be yourself but like be maybe more mindful about the, uh, the social media as a, a, a e uh, business card um, and then will be like, uh, I think like I I think like I'm I'm because I'm not good at networking, but like uh, with the curiosity myself and open myself, other people be very easy to talk to me, and I'm also uh, easy to talk to 
other because like I think like uh, people uh, will like the people with open mindset and 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 and, and, and really that like, truly care about something and they really uh, they will willing to uh, to answer you and uh, and and show you something that you don't know if you really care about this and you are uh, come uh, to them with uh, sincerity and 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 and, 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 and uh, with like uh, would like um, uh, like, like I mean, like would like learning attitude or, or, or an open mindset, yeah, to learn from them. Do you want to add anything more? All right. So viewers, yeah. so these are the tips. Uh, well, I just want to tell you, Cham, I don't think that you are bad at networking. <laughs> You've been speaking and, 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 and meeting a lot of people, and look, today you are also in the show as well. So you're doing pretty well. Uh, just viewers, she's been really nice. Uh, so let me summarize her tips. Um, so our tips is about uh, focus about quality over quantity. Not just get thousands and non-valuable people and but right value. Number two, use social media properly so you can use it to connect more people. And number three is about build the right personality. If you if you don't like yourself, nobody probably is gonna like you too. So build the right person personality as well because it's not about faking because you need to be authentic to build a relationship or networking uh, thank you John for sharing this one um, so on this one I, I think there's a lot of young viewers who are at early 20s or, or late 20s right now so I want to go to that thing um, I don't want to ask about your age because I think probably to, <laughs> it will be pretty pretty odd to ask so I just want to go on this one in your early 20s what are the key mistakes did you make and what what lesson did you get from it so the other young fellows or viewers can really learn those listen learn from you too as well so they can they can do better mm, what is the failure from my key mistakes or key failure or wrong decision you make at early 20s mm -hmm. uh, so um, I think like um, it's going to be like uh, sometime when I young uh, because like it's 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 our um, uh, it it may sound strange but like uh, when I young I'm, I'm not really to take the risk and uh, step out of my comfort zone like uh, uh, like now because like now if you give me a new opportunity a new challenge I'm willing to take it I'm willing to take a lot of risk. If I know that's like it can, I can learn uh, and I, I can learn anything from this and I can grow from this. But when I was younger, I'm a, a little bit conservative and I'm not uh, really willing to take risk. I'm not really willing to step out of my comfort zone. So when it come, uh, when it also come to uh, to uh, the uh, the major in university or choosing the the very first like job. I also very conservative and and I'm choosing like what I really know, what I think that I can do it well. And if someone give me an opportunity that I'm not sure that I can do it or I can fit it, because um, I, I I'm not sure because I haven't tried. But like I also don't have any other way to take. But uh, I will say no. Uh, so um, sometimes I miss some uh, like. Uh, wonderful opportunity because of the conservative mindset but i think nowadays i'm uh, with the more open mindset and and and, and, and the willing to take risk and willing to move out of my comfort zone a lot a lot of new opportunity has come to me and it helped me to learn and grow me into uh, and shape me into what i am today so uh, i i i i um I, I cannot like tell any specific like, like like example now, but like I think like I also, I already like missed some uh, great opportunity in the past, and uh, because of just just because of the converse, conservative myself. Yeah. All right, thank you for sharing. So, look, viewers, this is the thing Cham shared about it. When you're young, don't get comfortable, and don't think about getting settled down too early. So that is gonna go, going to will not help you to get your best potential, uh, and and learn from it, and 
and she i'm sure that she's back over her head is that if she would do that thing she would go even more successful today as well thank you for sharing i think it's 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 not an easy conversation to share about any particular mistakes nobody feel comfortable saying that one but i think yeah. there is a good lesson learning as well too um so as we talked about um um the mistakes right i want to go to opposite side of two but before that let me just remind the viewers viewers this is the last question we're going to take and then we're going to start answering your questions so do not miss out any job any recruitment any interview tips or whatever or hr bp related career go ahead keep commenting i can see there is some question came from vung tao uh, baria Danang, Ho Chi Minh City. So keep commenting your live show questions and we will go through. This is the last question, all right? So getting back to you, Cham. So we talked about mistake, right? So let's say in, in early 20s, what are the good decisions did you really make that really helped you to be today? I'm sure you made a tons of good decisions. So that, that's why you were today. Share us a few so um, other people can learn too. Yeah, so I think like, um, uh one of the, the good decision that uh i take uh is like i start like uh working from uh, from early stage of, of, of university i start having my first internship and part-time job uh, when i uh, just on my second year of university so um, I'm, I'm not forgetting that you are uh, dropping school or you have to like uh like 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 uh, do not focus on your study and uh, and then have your part-time job or internship. I did not mention this, but like I mean, like if you can balance uh, between the time for study and time for really go outside to get like real life experience and get cooking experience, just do it. And 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 and, and um, because like. Uh, from the second year of university, I start like having internship and having some uh, good part time job. Uh, even if the uh, it's not a significant role in any like, big organization, but the skill and the, uh, the the network that I gain from that time it helped me a lot in my career journey. And then uh, because like uh, um, whenever I work in in, in uh, with anyone and in any uh, company and organization, I would I always uh, try my best to perform and I always try my best to contribute to the company and they see the potential in me and they see the valuable in me and then uh, they refer me to uh, a lot of other uh, bigger opportunity. So actually from, uh, uh, from the start of my career, uh, they only one time that I had to submit my CV to get a job. All right. Every other, the, the other time, the, 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 um, someone know about me, someone know about my strength and my ability, they are referring to me, uh, referring me to uh, some good opportunity that they are know they are looking for the type of profile like me. So only one time that I have to like, like proactively submit my CV. The rest is like, like, like gaining from the, uh, the networking and the, the people that I uh, have chance to work with and, uh, and, 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 and um, uh, yeah, that's it. So I think like, uh, start like, um, having my first job uh, in, in, uh, in very soon in, in the first and second year of university in one of my life. I think like, uh, like, uh, great it, like decision. So viewers, you can learn from this thing from Chum. Start early, start early as soon as possible, and, and it, it worked also as as well for me as well too. I started when I was in high school, so she started at university, and she re that really helped her as well too. So viewers, start early. Um, um, now is always much better than never. So if you're already fourth year and you said, "Oh, I'm too late already," no, 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 no. Now, now is better than never. Um, yeah, right.